Mac Center, 36 Juliet. 36 Juliet, it's off McMurdo for Wright Valley, 5 0 minutes plus 7 souls and 2 plus 0 0 on the fuel. My name is Harlan Blake. I'm a helicopter pilot in McMurdo, Antarctica. My name is Jennifer Benedict. I am a helitech. Now we're over the Blue Glacier. 36 Juliet is a Bell 212, and <laughs> year to year there's always a problem child, and this year it was her. As you get the aircraft started and you come off the ground, she has her own personality. We swear there's little gremlins in that aircraft that hop around from system to system. So we, we try to baby her a little bit more than any of the others. As we get to the top and we break out of the Blue Glacier Valley, we enter the Farrar Glacier, and the Cathedral Rocks are on the left-hand side. Now we're over the Farrar Glacier. As we climb these glaciers, we start at sea level with these, and all the way to the South Pole, the ice thickness gets to 10,000 feet, which is absolutely amazing if you think about how much pure water and ice that is. Being around the glaciers, you can kind of get lost in that scale. I don't know, it kind of puts you in your place a little bit, <laughs> thinking about that spatial and temporal scale. Weather changes very quickly in Antarctica. What might be nice in the next couple hours will turn treacherous on us shortly thereafter. You might think you're having a beautiful day, which we were, and then we came across a massive cloud that was just hanging right over the top of Mount Coates, which just presented us an uh, impossibility to land there. It was a very cold day. <laughs> that day we had uh, some pretty good winds off the glaciers. As we come up on Friss Hills, with the large boulders in the wind direction, it's very difficult to find a comfortable spot to land. It's 25 below zero, but the sun shines warm on your face. The Freeze Hills are part of the McMurdo Dry Valleys, one of the driest places on Earth. 20 million years ago, this ground was wet bog, dotted with trees and buzzing with insects but water hasn't flowed here in 14 million years. Two thousand feet below you, two glaciers meet. The Farrar flows into the sea and the Taylor into a valley. But our destination is behind you, over the Asgard Range and into the Wright Valley. As we cross over the Asgard range, clearing some of those mountain peaks, we are now at six and 7,000 feet. And then we break into the upper Wright Valley. The Wright Valley is one of my favorite landscapes. I'm wishing I remembered more from my geology classes because there's striations in the rocks that are incredible. I think what makes the ice fall so spectacular, it's on the far end of the dry valleys and so few people get to go out there and see that ice just pouring over the top of that mountain ridge. And being able to fly close up to it, we were dealing with some pretty good turbulence and some winds as we moved closer and closer to get a, a sense of how, how thick and how much ice there really is coming off that continental ice sheet.
I think this is the most spectacular view in Antarctica. On the left-hand side, we have the ice falls. Right in front of us, you have the edge of the upper right valley glacier. And then just to the right of that starts the labyrinth. And then the right valley continues all the way to the sea. It's often said that when you set foot in these areas, you're most likely the first person that has ever stood in that exact spot. And I think that's kind of special. I like to wear the U.S. Special Forces crest on my helmet just to show people where I came from. 24 years in the United States Army, 18 of that I spent flying helicopter gunships, three different combat tours. And when you're flying a gunship and you roll in on a target and launch some missiles and then watch those missiles hit your target, it's just incredible. So I love to blow things up. I was a wildland firefighter for 12 years and two of those were as a hella repeller. A lot of people are familiar with smoke jumping, which is jumping out of the fixed wings and parachuting. Repelling is a similar concept, but we are repelling out of a helicopter on a 250-foot rope into wildfires. I think it's a lot of fun climbing out on that skid and then waiting for your signal to go down that rope. As we're coming up on the labyrinth, one of the things that strike me the most about it is how the glacier formed the cuts in the ground. And then as we break over the edge, the right valley opens up again and you have these different ponds. Coming up on Don Juan Pond, it'll be off the left side of the aircraft. This is the saltiest pond on Earth, far saltier than the Dead Sea. The ankle-deep water rarely freezes, even in winter. If there is liquid water on Mars, it might look like this. And Don Juan might be the only pond on Earth too harsh to support life. We've just touched down on the southern side of Lake Vanda. The lake surface is frozen, but underneath is some of the clearest water on the planet, fed by the longest river in Antarctica. As you're walking the valley, you would assume that the water would run to the ocean, but in this case, the Onyx River it gives you the optical illusion of flowing up the valley to Lake Vanda. Our mission in Antarctica is to support science. I have a great opportunity to be able to interact with the scientists. I fly them out to their camps. We bring them their supplies. We talk to them about their science and what their research entails. The Wright Valley is used a lot by NASA. Whenever they're testing new vehicles or new prototypes, they like to take it out to Antarctica because of the extreme conditions, the extreme cold, the winds. Antarctica best represents how they expect Mars to be. I get to see more of Antarctica than probably anyone else, and I get to experience the wonders of Antarctica every single time I take off, which is a hell of an experience. One of the things I like to do is fly by icebergs and let people get a sense of how massive they are. And as we had come up on it, flying real close, you can see we're at uh, 100 feet above the actual sea ice. And that's just one tiny piece of this massive continent. Your brain just cannot comprehend the vastness of this continent. And the dangers, the spectacular views, it's all rolled into one. And you can look at all the pictures you want, you can look at all the films that have been produced, 
but nothing replaced actually putting your foot on the ground in Antarctica and saying, I'm here. Thank you.